Seat's Alhambra is a large seven-seater galaxy-sized MPV that has value, technology, practicality and sheer cleverness on its side. If you're browsing in this sector and this car isn't on your shopping list, then it should be. We're so used to seeing Seat as a sporty brand that it's easy to forget the Spanish Mark's other core attribute, value for money. Now, uh, combining the two things isn't easy, and it may have prevented this company from becoming the kind of Iberian Alfa Romeo that its ger German owners wanted to be. But many loyal family buyers won't care if it means that the Spaniards can continue to bring us Volkswagen designs at more affordable prices. Cars like this one, the Alhambra 7-seat large MPV. With its other super minis, family hatchbacks and saloons, Seat has clothed the Golf or Polo mechanicals borrowed from its parent company in designs that are quite different. In many cases, the driving experience is sharpened too. There's little of that here. Though this Alhambra gets a smart Seat family nose, otherwise it's a Volkswagen Charan through and through, which means that it's a very classy people carrier indeed, at a significantly more affordable price. Let's check it out. Now this car has plenty to live up to. The original Alhambra was after all based not only on Volkswagen's Charan, but also on the first generation version of Ford's Galaxy, a people carrier that was astonishingly good to drive for a car of its time. Now this one doesn't emphasize driving dynamics quite as much, but uh, its handling is still light years ahead of its predecessor, as you'd expect given that the designers had 14 years to come up with something better. Now, they haven't wasted their time either, achieving the apparently impossible conundrum of creating a car that, though significantly bigger, is also significantly lighter by about 30 kilograms. Impressive. Behind the wheel, you find yourself in something that doesn't feel that far removed from any normal family hatchback. Certainly it's big, but uh, the commanding view you get from the glassy cabin really compensates for that, and there are our standard reverse parking sensors to make sure the parking isn't too much of a bind. Even an optional park assist system that'll self-steer the car into the tightest spaces. When you are out on the road, um, the driving experience isn't quite as dynamic as a Ford Galaxy. The steering in particular could do with a bit more feel, but it's certainly very car-like with a supple ride and body roll that's well controlled. It feels eager too, even when fitted with the apparently unpromising entry-level 1.4-litre TSI petrol unit. Both supercharging and turbocharging are enough to generate 150 PS, which uh, is enough to drag 1.75 tonnes of people carrier along at quite a lick. Rest to 62 takes 10.7 seconds on the way to 122 miles an hour, though frequent use of the six-speed manual gearbox is required to maintain rapid progress. More relaxed, predictably, is the 2 litre TDI 140 PS engine that most customers will probably choose. It's um, a very refined unit and uh, especially responsive too, with plenty in reserve for short notice overtaking. Rest of 60 takes 10.9 seconds on the way to 120 miles an hour. Pulling power is plentiful, there's 320 newton meters of it. Uh, enough, in fact, to raise this car's towing limit from the 1,800 kilograms you get in the 1.4 litre petrol TSI to 2,200 kilograms. Its merits are certainly enough to ensure that the more powerful option, a 170 PS version of the 2 litre TDI diesel, will remain a minority choice. And as with most modern Sierra products, there's the option for those who want it of a clever seven speed twin clutch DSG semi-automatic gearbox. This is the largest car the Spanish brand has yet made, measuring fully 4.8 meters stern to stern. So you won't be surprised to hear that size is not in short supply when it comes to cabin space. Even so, it's a car that disguises its bulk well the windscreen and bonnet forming a continuous sharply angled line from roof to grille for a wedge-shaped profile. At the front, large headlights and a low bumper add a little character to Seat's trademark arrow design nose. There's plenty of versatility in all models thanks to the easy fold seating system. Now, you needed a Mensa IQ and the strength of a Ukrainian shot putter to maximize the luggage capacity of the old Alhambra 
because uh, the seats needed to be folded, released from their mounts and lifted out. Now with this uh, version it's all very different. The seats in both rearward rows fold easily, tumbling beneath the floor. Now as you might have noticed earlier, there's not much room uh, with all seven seats in place, but travelling five up like this, you've got as much as 1,167 litres of room. Travel two up and you can release 2,297 litres, that's almost 2.3 cubic metres, and extend the figure still further by folding flat the front passenger seat, freeing up almost three metres of total load length. Practical loading touches include tie-down points, hooks for your shopping bags, and the clever way that you can program the uh, height of the tailgate for low garage ceilings. If you're carrying people rather than packages, then entry is now by optionally electrically sliding side doors, so your kids won't re-sculpture the bodywork of adjacent cars as they throw themselves out into the supermarket car park. And access to the third row, the rearmost seats, which is where my three always want to sit, is also made easier by the easy entry function, by which the outer seats on the second row tilt and slide forward in a single motion. Once in these rearmost chairs, kids will be delighted to find that they sit a little higher than those ahead, while their parents will discover that this is one of those unusual things, a seven-seater that seven fully-sized adults can actually fit into. Compact seven-seater MPVs and most 4x4s uh, have rearward chairs at the very back that are for kids only, or for very uncomplaining or agile adults unfamiliar with the offerings of Colonel Sanders. Now, to be honest, the original Alhambra wasn't much better, but thanks to 22 centimetres of extra body length and uh, nearly two metres in width, this one's been able to make a real step forward. Plus, the huge glass area removes the feeling of claustrophobia that you'd normally expect to find back here. Second row occupants who can recline their three individual chairs uh, for greater comfort on longer journeys and uh, push them backwards and forwards by up to 160 millimetres to prioritise either their legroom or that of those behind are even better catered for. Plus there's the option for parents of flip-up booster cushions which can be used uh, and put away as and when needed. Wherever you're seated in this car there's plenty of head, leg and shoulder room but of course the most comfortable perch is to be found behind the wheel where uh, ample adjustability for both uh, seat and steering wheel mean that it's easy to find the ideal driving position. Now the dashboard layout won't win any awards for design flair but everything feels solid and built to last, well able to withstand the potential rigours of everyday family life. Now, Seat are in a slightly different position to their partner's Volkswagen, in that if this car is seen as too expensive by customers, then they don't have a couple of other, uh, more affordable seven-seater designs to point them towards. Hence, the importance of this car's value proposition, that will see most Alhambra customers playing in the 22,500 to 25,000 pound bracket. Now, that represents a saving of between 650 and 750 pounds over a comparable but more poorly specified Volkswagen Charan and a saving of between 600 and 1,000 pounds over a comparable Ford Galaxy. Only uh, bargain basement brands offering older designs, Kia Sedona for instance, can, real, can really offer a better value proposition in this segment. And make sure that you really are comparing against proper full-size large seven-seater MPVs like these, models that can properly carry seven adults, rather than compact seven-seater MPVs where the rearmost seats are really only for occasional child use. Under the bonnet, most Alhambra buyers will want the 2-litre TDI 140 PS variant that I've got here. There's also a 170 PS version of the same car if you want a bit of extra performance. But don't ignore the entry-level 150 PS 1.4 litre TSI petrol variant. Uh, it's a surprisingly impressive package with its, uh, its actually very good fuel returns and its much lower asking price. And it could even represent a better bet if all you're going to be using the car for is the daily school run. Whichever Alhambra you choose, you should find it to be decently equipped. 
Despite its lower asking price compared to the Sharan, entry-level customers get three key features that they have to pay extra for on the equivalent Volkswagen. Namely, three-zone rather than two-zone electronic climate control, alloy wheels and reverse parking sensors. You can also expect to find Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, all-round electric windows, power sockets in the rear for the kids' uh, electronic gadgets, a decent quality eight-speaker DAB digital radio stereo with MP3 compatibility and a socket for your iPod, plus an electronic handbrake with an auto-hold feature for easy hill starts. Options include electric power for the side doors and or the tailgate, a full-length panoramic glass roof, a full beam assistant that can dip the lights for you at night, a sat-nav system, albeit with a rather small screen, and a tow hook that disappears neatly under the rear valance. Safety-wise, there's seven airbags, including a driver's knee airbag and curtain airbags that go the full length of the cabin, ESP stability control, and the usual braking and traction aids. There's also a tyre pressure monitoring system there because this car doesn't have room for a spare wheel. Instead, uh, the tyres have a self-sealing film of polymer that's capable of healing all but the largest holes itself once you've extracted the offending object. All Alhambras uh, feature Seat's green-fingered Ecomotive badging. Uh, thanks to their standard inclusion of regenerative braking and a stop-start system that cuts the engine when you're waiting in traffic or stuck at the lights, just to save fuel. Now, um, the TDI uh, 2 litre 140 PS uh, version that I'm driving here grabs the honour of E Ecomotive badging. That's the badge work that's supplied by Seat to the most frugal model in each of its model ranges. That's because thanks to selective catalytic reduction technology, uh, this engine is able to return just 146 grams per kilometre of CO2, an outstanding return for a car of this size. Even the uh, 1.4 litre petrol variant manages 167 grams per kilometre of CO2. At the pumps, expect uh, 50 miles to the gallon uh, on the combined cycle to be achievable on a regular basis, whichever of the two uh, 2 litre TDI diesel models you choose. Even the 1.4 litre petrol TSI is capable of 39.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Uh, residual values won't be quite as strong as the equivalent Volkswagen Sharan, but uh, that won't matter quite as much as it would normally to those uh, Alhambra customers, and there are many of them, that will be looking to keep their cars for quite a long period. Mainstream models uh, insurance groups uh, range between 16 and 21. You get the usual three-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Uh, there's 12 years of uh, anti-perforation warranty for the galvanized steel body, three years of paintwork warranty, and two years of pan-European uh, SEAT uh, assistance should you break down. As a full-sized large MPV with a king-sized carrying potential, SEAT's Alhambra may not be quite of the sporty, stylish persuasion we'd normally expect from this Spanish mark, but it has plenty of other virtues. Now that it can properly accommodate seven adults and has seats that fold easily into the floor, it can compete on direct terms with rivals it mostly easily undercuts, both on price and specification. This generation version's lighter, faster, and better built, plus its high-tech engines offer lower running costs than ever before. All attributes that family buyers will find hard to ignore from a car offering this kind of value proposition. People carriers have come on a long way since the last time you tried one. And if you want proof of that, you'll find it right here.